now we come to again an interesting thing that is called Dalton's law of partial pressure. So Dalton's Dalton's law of partial pressure. Okay. Let me take you into, into some more depth in the ideal gas equation. PV is equal to nRT. Look, this N does not say what kind of gas you should be dealing with. Okay? <coughs> it's absolutely silent about it. Okay? And it is silent because it actually does not matter what is the nature of the particles. What matters is the number of the particles. Now in the beginning when this is taught, one thing that gets engraved into your mind is that we are dealing with with a with a gas that is pure say if it's oxygen it has to be oxygen okay but then then again the simplistic looking equation that is absolutely silent about about what the nature of these particles it says only number only mole now what if I put 1 mole or say 2.5 mole of oxygen and 3.7 mole of nitrogen and 7.2 mole of helium and, and maybe say 11.9 moles of carbon dioxide. What? What happens? It says nothing. Fine. Nothing happens. It just gets added up. N is the number of moles. N is the number of moles. That's all. That's all it says. Now, as I have told you, only that much is said or not said in science as is required. So, if they wanted to tell you something or if it had varied with the nature of the particles or, or that means if you had taken different gases, it would have been a different quantity, then they would have said so. Correct. They are not that lazy. But this is somehow, this is somehow... This, this, this fact enters <coughs> our mind. Okay. So what if I put in three, four kinds of gases in it and, and try to measure the pressure. And each with individual number of moles that, that we know. But there, there is a condition. The condition is that these gases should not react. then only the individual number of particles will be ensured. Otherwise what happens? Otherwise what happens? Suppose you put H2 and O2 and it, be, it forms, forms H2O, then what happens actually? 2H2 plus 1O2, 2H2 plus 1O2, 2H2, H2 plus 1O2 gives you, one, gives you two molecules of H2O. So, three of them turn into two and that is another brilliance. It simply does not matter whether it is atom or molecule or if it, it's a molecule, how big. It says only the number of moles matter. Only. So, if they react, then what do they apply? Instead of three, they will become two. Each two hydrogen and one oxygen will become actually... 2 H2O. So, so it will reduce. It will reduce. So, the number of moles will change. So, you had started with 2 moles of this and 1 moles of this. It will only result into 2 moles of this. And the pressure will be lesser than what you were expecting it to be. Less. Lesser. I said more. Lesser. It is lesser than what you were expecting. You, you will be calculating it with 3. It will become 2. 
that is the only thing you have to keep in mind and that is so 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 uh, so, so it grants you so much of freedom so much of freedom it does not say monoatomic diatomic triatomic tetraatomic water atomic this atomic nothing it says number of moles one gas two gas five gas nine gas does not matter right and that is that is a thing that is less emphasized so you should keep this in your mind engrave it in your mind that n n is the number of moles okay number of moles so <coughs> it is the number of particles that's all that is it is the number of particles it is the number of particles fine so 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 i'll i'll write a note these particles could be these part this is number of particles these particles these particles could be atoms or molecules okay there are molecules diatomic triatomic or whatever or whatever hmm same element <coughs> of the same element or different elements of the same element or different elements correct does not matter only the number matters so compounds can be of different different elements now this number of moles can be due to one gas or two or more non reacting gases two or more non reacting gases if they are the if the gases react you should know the reaction you should also understand if the conditions condition for that reaction is satisfied or if someone has told you yes they are reacting then you calculate the equation still then too you have no trouble okay then too you will face no trouble at all fine so what does it say it says you rest assured let n be whatever so i put in say n number of gases let there be n number of gases with n1 n2 n n let it be m number of gases with number of moles as this respectively in a container with volume with volume v and pressure pressure p p and volume v pressure p and temperature t we understand 
Now I can very easily apply that, that ideal gas equation. Fine. I can very easily apply the ideal gas equation. And what does it give me? So, so, so from the ideal gas equation, from the ideal gas equation, we have, we have what? What do we have? We have PV is equal to how many number of moles for non-reacting gases, okay? I, I'll add the gases are, the gases are non-reacting. So their individual entity is intact, okay? It is intact. So the number of moles remains the same. Fine, they have not reacted. So PV is equal to I have N1 plus N2 plus N3 plus dot 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 N M R T. Is it not? Now, P is N1 plus N2 plus N3 up to Nm Rt upon V. Now, this is something that you should again understand. There are M number of gases in a container. What, what amount of volume is each of the gas occupying? What is it occupying? V. V. Don't ever feel that they are occupying V by M volume. No. Because gases are, what is the characteristic? They mix on their own without any effort. So they'll reach all corners. Okay. It is not that they'll be kind of in V upon M giving way for others. No. Not that disciplined. They are random, they will spread all over. Understand? That means you go to any part of that chamber and try to pick up something, you will get kind of all gases. You will get a particle of maybe 1 and 2 and 3 and mth gas, all of them there. Understand? So, so what happens? Now, now this equation, now again I am telling you, again and again, the more you understand this equation, the more you appreciate it. The more you appreciate it, the stronger a weapon it becomes in your armory. Right? It is a hugely, hugely, hugely important equation. Now, and, and this is all algebraic manipulation that we are doing, right? So, so what I do, I say it is N1 RT upon V. Is it not? Plus N2 RT upon V. Plus N3 RT upon V. Plus N M RT upon V. Okay. Now what is that? What is this? Let us try to understand this term. This is the pressure that would have been exerted by gas number 1 if the same number of moles was in the <coughs> same volume and at the same temperature. Correct. So I name it, I call it P1 and I call this P2. I call this P3. And, and the same holds for all of them. That means if there was a, a single gas and I would have put it in a, in a, in a container at, at the same temperature at which we have the mixture, then what happens? It would have exerted this amount of pressure, N1 RT upon V. Single gas. And gas 2, if put in the same volume at same temperature, N2, the same number of moles, it would have exerted single, single. Okay? 
let me let me make it clear i'll erase this so so it is saying that this is the container this is the container come on this is the container and you would have put a gas here okay and you had some pressure gauge and this was showing you p1 okay sealed container n1 n1 and you would have put in the same container or, or, or you buy some identical containers you put n2 moles of the gas number two okay again a pressure gauge n2 same lab same temperature right you come to the other one this is p2 you come to the other one they are identical maybe maybe they do not look so but please uh, consider them to be identical containers okay you put only gas 3 measure the pressure say it shows p3 and here here it measures The emeth gas PM. There are many more containers. Now it tells you a very, very, very simple thing. This equation. It says if you say I want to put all the pressure, all the gases, I, I withdraw it from all those M containers, I put it only in one container. They are non reacting gases. Okay the same the identical temperature the identical the identical container i am drawing the container here same condition same volume the identical another of one of these identical containers you decide to put n1 plus n2 plus nm the best part is that the best part is that the pressure is the sum of these pressures. And that, 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 is, that is the whole beauty of it. Okay? Yes, that's all. So what you had measured here on individual dials, you just add them. That's all. And it's so brilliant, right? It's really so brilliant that that your total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures and that gives me the definition for partial pressures so what is the partial pressure partial pressure is the pressure that would have been exerted by a particular gas had it been put individually into a container of same volume at same temperature and the total pressure will be the sum of all these partial pressures. This is called Dalton's law of partial pressure. Okay? This is called the Dalton's law. That, that the total pressure, when these individual gases, instead of remaining in the individual containers, come into one single container, same temperature, their total pressure is equal to the sum of the individual pressures. That's all. Okay? That's all. Here, this, you put it here, the equivalence is that the pressures will get summed up. That is all. Understand? Okay? <clears throat>